Now we move on to a very interesting aspect, which is the anthropology of Kavali, which uh, Dr. Vinesh Srivastav is going to give us a talk on. He is um, uh, a professor in, uh, uh, in uh, Delhi University. And uh, like I said, he's been the, uh, the principal of Hindu College. Thank you, Dr. Vinesh Srivastav. So good afternoon to, to all of you. After such erudite and evocative lectures and performances, uh, you'll find my presentation extremely uninteresting and also very academic. But I can't help it. I can't help it because I am from the university and one who is very closely connected to research and research traditions. And what I would do today is provide some kind of an understanding of what could be called an anthropology or a sociology of Kavali traditions. I have been very closely observing this tradition, partly because I was born and brought up in Old Delhi, where Kavali was, the Kavali tradition, was a part of the household structures. I remember my childhood days when my grandfather, my maternal grandfather and paternal grandfather, both of them used to invite the band of Kavals and they would come to our house. And I still remember that my job used to be to serve them with sugar pebble, pebbles, what are called misri, sugar pebbles and, uh, and kali mirch, the powder of kali mirch. And these Kavals would, uh, would sing. And this used to be a household performance. I was born and brought up in this tradition, Kavali being very close to, close to that. The second part is that I am married to a woman who has been working on Sufi tradition. And I accompanied her on many rounds of field work in Delhi, outside Delhi, and had, had an opportunity to listen to several Kavali performances and also to speak to several Kavals. Actually, in all these lectures which I have heard on Sufism, the lectures I have heard on Kavali, the, the, the reading I have made on Kavalis and other analogous traditions, Kavals are absent. Who are these people? How the tradition is cultivated? What are their economic problems? How they relate themselves to contemporary world? We have to make a distinction between the great tradition of Kavalis and the little tradition of Kavalis. The great tradition of Kavalis here, here where you have Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan, the Shahanshah of Kaval or Kavali. And where you have the very prominent names, people whose cassettes and whose performances bring them a lot of money and they are affluent. What about those Kavals who sing at the shrines of various saints in different parts of the city? What about those Kavals who you know, do their performances at lesser known shrines? And have we tried to understand their lives? Have we tried to understand their problems? And if the tradition of the Kavali is to be kept alive, then these are the people who need to be studied. Their problems need to be addressed. I was touched by what Manjari ji said in the beginning, that, that most of these Kavals are not highly educated. 
the tradition they have acquired is from their families and they have they have learnt it and they perform they perform and now this is the time that all this needs to be documented it needs to be understood in fact which is the title of this this workshop or the seminar understanding qawali and the tradition has to be kept alive the tradition has to be made central to the mainstream of indian music rather than something which is bizarre which is peculiar something which is outside the the mainstream already the films have done quite a bit of it whether it is right or not is a question of value which one can take up a little little later now these are the problems which i want to want to address well as i said in the beginning that i come from a discipline where what is central the both the disciplines which i handle social anthropology and sociology what is central is what is called field work that this is something which is basic rather than looking at the qawwali performances downloading from the youtube or or listening to the cassettes go and see the actual performances what actually happens what actually happens happens there and then then from these performances from the study of these performances go to the qawwals what we sometimes call the follow up approach speak to them find out their problem see how the traditions are being cultivated at the local level what are their economic problems do they want their children to learn the qawalis do want, do they want the tradition to to continue our concern should not only be with the great tradition of the qawalis our concern should be with the little tradition of the qawalis with this as the as the prologue with this as the opening note i would like to submit a couple of things about what i have learned from my understanding of the of the qawwali tradition and many research questions which emerge out of out of it and the questions which can be taken up in later and further further investigation now the whole study of of qawalis in the in the context of culture after all music is culture in the context of culture has to begin with the role of music in religious performances is a broad idea what is the role of of music role of poetry in 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 religious tradition because as you know that there have been people who have been anti music we know about it and we also know about it that in many of the religious traditions music is rather downplayed so so when we have a comparative study of different religious traditions we find that most of the religious traditions we come across not with the standing some of their sectarian movements and cultic organizations not with the standing that we find that music has become or is an integral part of most of the religious tradition and the two questions which are asked is is that that why music should be a part of the tradition this is the first question why it should be it should be there can't we have a religious performance can't we establish some kind of a communion with the, with you call it almighty you call it god you call it by any name without any religious performance so why music should be should be there and then the second aspect is what does music do the functional aspect what is its role how does mag- how does music transform us the whole idea of sama which we saw a large number of pictures which we saw with which we are we are we are familiar now you find various species of music we have aarti on the one hand we have bhajan we have kirtan and we also have qawalis 
different kinds of musical tradition some of them are solo some of them are in chorus some of them can be a team performance some can be an individual performance and there is a great deal of variation variation in it now the question which will come to my mind is is that what are the differences between these these tradition can there be a temple performance without aarti perhaps not it is an integral integral part but but perhaps bhajans and kirtans may not be a requirement in the temple they can be extraneous to it if they are coupled it is all right otherwise they can always be kept outside and in addition to these performances we also have certain performances which are at the domestic level the domestic performances are very important and to the best of my knowledge not many people have attended to and given attention to what happens at the domestic level the kind of singing which goes on at the at the domestic domestic level you know the kind of performances which are organized at the domestic level i gave you the example of my childhood days when qawalis were sung in my in my in my own house now when you compare these different religious traditions and you come to qawali qawali as one of these pieces of this this particular particular tradition it is essentially an institutional performance and that's how i would like to like to see it it happens when the institution is open meaning thereby when there are people the people are around and it is almost comparable to aarti it happens when the institution is is functional i have seen in many of the hindu temples bhajans being sung after the temple has closed and the devotee sitting outside and singing 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 bhajan so something which is a part of the institutional structure we just learned about the qadris and about the chishti silsila where it was an integral part but what has happened which in fact has also happened with other species of music is and let me use this word because this word is quite common in contemporary literature the word is decentered qawalis have been decentered decentered means mean they are no more a part of the institutional structure perhaps this process has started long time back and this process is 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 going on so you organize qawalis in your houses in colleges in schools i was in hindu college and every year the college hostel day had qawali performances and the qawals came from nizamuddin auliya shrine and they 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 performed there and these these public performances were um, uh, were adjusted to the time schedule of the institution in other words sometimes these performances were in the afternoon and perhaps afternoon is not the time to listen to listen to qawalis because qawalis also have a particular kind of uh, of adaptation to the time schedule and the time performance so it has been decentered it has become quite secularized a process which once again needs to be studied what i would call the secularization of the of the qawali qawali tradition so religious numbers are sung in secular context the secular words have become part of part of part of this and and you find you find the the same performance at the religious place the same performance at the secular place the words you know may remain the same or the words may change and this actually leads us to a very important part pertaining to pertaining to the actual performance i mean someone should sit down perhaps i will do it in 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 years to come listen to the qawali as it is being sung as it is being sung at the time of urs or on a thursday thursday most of the shrines have qawalis and the articles say it is a propitious day it is an important day uh, perhaps because of of the fact that the shrines are quite animate 
Javed and Zinda. These are the two words which are used. And on Thursdays, the the Javed, the ness of the shrines or the Zinda ness of the shrine is much more. And you can relate it with the souls descending from the seventh firmament to the place where where they are or where they are, they were they were actually actually buried. So so you find that that the traditions are the traditions are adjusted to uh, 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 to, 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 to that and uh, and with the coming of the secularization especially the roles of the films what has happened is that the Kavali tradition has become further decentered and ramified. I can easily identify, as I'm sure, if you look around, you will be able to do that, at least four processes which have occurred. The first process which has occurred is the feminization of the Kavali tradition. This is a very interesting, interesting thing, that, that women are singing Kavalis, which in fact, you know, as we learnt in the earlier part, it was all patriarchal, very, very, I would not use the word patriarchal, I'll prefer the word androcentric, mm -hmm. very, very male-oriented. And this is a better, better word, that men are a part of these, uh, these Kavali groups, and they are generally kinspersons, they are related by by blood, by the ties of consanguinity, and then there are children who are a part of the band, and the process of learning is also going on simultaneously. You can have a look at the pictures of, uh, of Nusrat Fateli Khan and his family members, and all of them are related, and, uh, and the young, what is his name, Rahat Fateli Khan, is, is his child, is, is with them, and is clapping, and is, is singing. So these aspects of, they are androcentric and they are kinship oriented, these, uh, these band. And, and so these Kaval families often talk about the, the long traditions. I mean, we have heard that Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan's tradition is 600 years old or so. The second thing which we find is, apart from feminization, is the competition among Kavals. And I think you remember the film Barsat Kiran. And you see this competition which is going on, and how this Kaval comes with a with a large number of medals stuck on his uh, on his on his coat, and in the, in the competition which uh, uh, which goes on, and uh, sometimes you come across this competition between men and and and, and women, the the male group and the female group, and 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 this this goes on. The third thing which you find is is the restoration of the religiosity in secular places, which is very interesting, that the secular places have their own species of songs, but these religious places come, and, and the fourth thing you find is that new kavalis are created, new words are created, new tunes, tunes are created, and the old numbers are, are added to the new numbers or the new numbers are added to the old numbers and this brings us to a very interesting and a very important question regarding you know who has been writing these kavalis who are the authors who are the authors of these these kavalis you know i have heard a large number of these kavalis particularly of the little tradition of course the great tradition also i'm familiar with you will find that each kaval is adding uh, something from his own side. Yeah. And I have often observed that if suppose the mnemonic power fails, I mean memory, for example, fails, suddenly is unable to remember the next line, he would improvise one, immediately would improvise one. And then of course it will be repeated, it will be repeated again and again, and it will fit in so well. I sometimes see the Kavali tradition as highly syncretic, and highly adaptive, highly syncretic. Yeah, yes. You know, it can observe. We talked about about you know Hindi, Urdu, Turkish language, Arabic language, Punjabi, and Khadi Boli, a bridge bhasha. You can also add lines from English language. You can add lines from French language, and they will fit in extremely well in the Kavali tradition. One of the questions which comes to my mind is. 
and someone should be able to answer it, that why we do not have in India the regional traditions of Qawwali. For example, Qawwali is being sung in Tamil or in Telugu or in Malayalam or in, uh, in Marathi. Why the whole tradition is confined to the northern part is, is, is something which needs to be investigated tried to sing Kavali, but their singing was more like the Bauli singers, you know, like bowls, you know, those those who have been singing. So the regional traditions of these Kavali, Kavali, why they have not come, why the whole tradition is confined to the the northern part, and there is a very strong probability of the regional traditions to develop, particularly because of the syncretic nature of Kavali tradition, just because of the highly, let me use this word, highly plastic and malleable nature of the Kavali tradition. You know, something in which, in which everything can be accommodated, in which all kinds of performances can be accommodated, and a tradition which is, and this is my other observation, and this goes very well, what, what uh, uh, Professor Shelley said this morning, about the highly pluralistic, tolerant nature of the tradition. Highly pluralistic nature, highly tolerant nature. Well, this is the tradition. You want to add something to this? Please go ahead. Please add it. We provide you this innovativeness and this creativity. You can do whatever you want to do, provided you do not defy the basic structure of the Khawalis. So, so this tradition, which now is having, is having two, uh, uh, two, two aspects. Number one, tradition as it is cultivated in the religious institutions. And the second, the tradition which is cultivated in the secular institutions. And these two traditions are not contrapuntal. These two traditions are not contradictory. They're not paradoxical. I would see that how they actually go on, on together. Now, we have heard a lot about Qawwalis. Few more points, I will not take much. Brevity is the soul of it. So, so some of these ideas which come in our mind is about the Sama, how this is created. I have read a lot about, about, about it. And also the fact that, that uh, it creates a situation where the, the, the members of the audience, you know, they are at the verge of annihilation. The term used is fana. We have also learned about many of the profound and renowned saints who in fact breathed their last in moments of summer. We have many, many stories. And, 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 and they became fana. They became one with almighty. Or they were released. Or they had the ultimate, ultimate truth. Now my question is, does it happen even today? Does it happen when the Qawalis are sung at the shrines? Go and observe it. I attended an Urs all the days and every moment I was there at the shrine of Abu Bakr Tusi. Now, you may always say that I did not go to the right places because I was just following my wife. So I, didn't, I couldn't go to the right places. Perhaps now I'll go. She was doing her field work there, so I... Matkapi, Abu Bakr uh, to see Hadri Kalandri. So I attended, attended the shrine. And I was particularly interested in seeing the, the, let me use this word, the ecological template being built up, the aura being built up in which the, the individuals are becoming more and more inwardly more and more looking inside when, when they are being transformed. Yes, it happened with some of them. It happened with me. To tell you very honestly, it happened with me. It provided me an opportunity to be in a crowd and at the same time be alone, lonely. Lonely man is the creator, so said Rabindranath Tagore, lonely man is the creator. Shame exists 
amongst many lonely man has no shame fear reigns amidst many lonely man has no shame lonely man is the creator the idea being realizing oneself what kavali did was and this is i am basing not on what is written in texts and what we have seen here but what i saw there to add one more thing to this with my own eyes so what i saw was was that people were getting transformed becoming more inwardly it was creating kavali was creating what is called assembly of listeners i would use this word assembly of listeners this assembly of listeners people who are at peace people who are sitting they are not the usual interlocutors interlocutor those who are walking in and going out the pravachan is going on as you may see in many of the other religious performances the pravachan is going on people are coming sitting for a while looking at their mobiles going out coming once again and the person who is giving pravachan is just going on is going on now it was not happening there people had peace with themselves they had settled down they were listening to it they were rocking their heads clapping some of them were simply very quiet looking inwardly what it was creating was i would call individualization realizing yourself others exist because you exist you all exist because i am there this kind of a peace with oneself actually i you know for my study of comparative religion i can say that one of the pieces of advice given to given to all of us is in a day be alone with yourself for some time i think that is the whole idea of meditation so realizing the self and then they were all being transformed into a community of believers and i can illustrate this process and some day i will write up an account you know saying that how kavali's transform an assembly of listeners giving rise to individualization realization of the individual looking inside finding oneself very close to the truth and then becoming a part of the community of believer and what is the belief what is the belief which kavali tradition that the belief which kavali tradition popularizes the belief which kavali tradition puts forth is human equality is that all of us are one allah ke bande we are all we are all created by him we are all created by almighty we are all equal this message of equality the gender distinctions distinctions of age distinctions of strata they just collapse they just collapse i have seen and you have also seen when the kavals keep on repeating the same word again and again again and again again and again eventually what happens is the word becomes meaningless it becomes meaningless you move from the realm of meaning to the realm of meaningless and this is actually the zero experience it is realization of oneself a great tradition which which actually does it you actually feel it in fact when i was heading hindu college i promoted kavalis i tried my level best to 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 promote just because i myself had realized had realized this process of where where the notion of equality the notion of oneness comes through a part of the performance i am not observing kavalis on my tv screen i am a part of it and that is why that is why i would urge upon everyone to go to to the shrines especially the lesser known shrines and be a part of the assembly of listeners especially lesser known shrine i was asking my wife that what happens 
at the shrine of uh, of uh, Nasiruddin Shah Nasiruddin Chirang uh, Delhi. What have what ha what happens there? And she said that it is a lesser known shrine. Not many people go there. I said perhaps I would like to go there, mm -hmm. and listen to listen to what what people say. And this brings me to the last last thing. Something which really really you know worries me. It really troubles me. You know. I did my work in Rajasthan and I was quite touched by the economic conditions of the people who work with puppets, puppet shows, and how abysmally they live in a penurious state, poverty, particularly, particularly, you know, because they don't want to change. And you have so many other, other, you know, uh, 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 crafts, other arts, other lords, which are on the verge of decline. What happens when the Qawwali session goes on? If the Qawwal is singing very well, people are entering into the state of ecstasy, or at least trying to enter into the state of ecstasy. They take out money and go and offer it. What is it? This money which is being offered, can we classify this money in any of the, of the terminologies we have? Is it dan? No. Is the dakshina? No. You have a term called veil, I think, huh? which is which is used for this. Where is it? Is it a feast? No. If you feel very happy and your pocket is loaded with money, you give 100 rupees, you may give even 500 rupees. And if you are poor, you just give 10 paisa. Of course, they have now become extinct, one rupee. Okay. Now, what kind of a payment is is this my hypothesis about the brahminical rituals is is that many of the brahmins do not want to perform the ritual just because they are not economically remunerative mm -hmm. the brahmin comes the panditji comes performs puja at the end of the puja you give him 101 rupees arti is performed and after taking blessing from the arti you give one rupee, two rupee. Well, there has to be some kind of a fees structure. Fees structure. Many of the Arya Samaj temples in South Delhi, where I live, you know, they have, in addition to all this dakshina and other things, they have a fees, you know, for the for the performance. After all, we and the institutions like this one, we have to take care of the tradition, and these traditions will be able to continue, will be able to survive, provided we take care of the economic problems of the of the of, of, of the people. And this will only be possible when we bring a Kavali main to the mainstream. Mainstream, what it would be? It would be schools and colleges. It would be public performances where Kavali should be an integral part and perhaps you know institutions like this we are all with you can help in in promoting this will give rise to the dynamism of the tradition of course the tradition is already very very dynamic with the, uh, 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 with the films contributing to this but that is only contributing to the great tradition and not to the little tradition. I would, as an anthropologist and a sociologist, I would submit that we should carry out more studies of the Kavals, the people who are involved, their families. We should try to understand. We should listen to what they say. We should listen to to the conditions in which they are placed. We should try to document their lives as well in addition to their tradition. This will be a great service and this is our, 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 you know, your, uh, our submission also. This will be a great service to a tradition which, which is threatened if not completely dying out especially at the local little level. Thank you very much.